We'll bring you out here to the Miramar Air Show and what you can expect this weekend. The county pays out more than a million dollars to settle an excessive force lawsuit. There's people on the ground. My wife's not there anymore. I have to assume that she's safe. Plus, it was the deadliest mass shooting in modern U.S. history, a preview of the new docu-series on the 2017 Las Vegas shooting and the off-duty San Diego police officer who was there. A San Diego's Promotores program is helping connect local communities with vital information. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts right now. If you haven't seen it, you've probably heard it. The Miramar Air Show is back after three years. Good evening, I'm Jesse Pagan. And I'm Kirsten Holmes. Marcella and Carlo are off tonight. Now, pilots in, of planes, big and small, military and civilian, are taking to the skies all weekend long. We followed all the action for day one. CBS 8's Anna Laurel is live on the base for the excitement where she's been watching the high-flying stunts all day long. Anna? Hi, you guys. Oh, my goodness. It was so thrilling to be out here when the Blue Angels were up above and roaring all around. Look, they're parked on the runway here behind me now. So all is quiet, but it's about to rev up again early tomorrow. There are air shows all day long, Saturday and Sunday. It's free to get in. You do not want to miss this. The Blue Angels and the Miramar Air Show roared and soared back into action this afternoon. A San Diego tradition that's been silent for almost three years because of the pandemic. We're excited to be back. The, I have three boys and we've come every year with their school. And then I grew up coming with my dad ever since I was a kid. Cameron Cross bought his five-year-old son, Connor. Just to expose them to something they don't see every day. You know, he, he sees stuff on TV, but, you know, to get out here and actually touch it, you know, I think it's kind of cool. It's great for kids. Just remember, it's loud. Saturday and Sunday, aerobatic teams will be in the air all day, leading up to the Blue Angels show that starts at 3 p.m. both days. It's not just what's in the sky out on the tarmac. You can walk around more than 50 aircraft on display. The theme of this weekend's show, Fight, Evolve, Win. Come out and check it out for yourself. All right, so if you do come this weekend, and again, it is free. I keep saying that because it's hard to believe. It is so cool to be so close to the Blue Angels and all these F-22s, the choppers, the everything doing these stunts. Hard to believe it's free for all of us to come and enjoy it. But if you do come, you can bring your own snacks, your own water bottle. You just need to put everything in one of those clear plastic bags or, you know, the bags instead of just uh, uh, your regular purse or whatever. Um, again, gates open at 8 a.m. You'll probably be seeing it all over town and hearing it all over town. Enjoy it this weekend. Live out here at Miramar, I'm Anna Laurel for CBS 8. You know, the air show is an amazing way to get people out to see what our servicemen and women can really do. I was out at Miramar earlier this morning and got a firsthand look at all of the fun and one of the lesser known benefits of having an air show. Take a look. It's not all just about the planes. We're also creating the next generation of pilots. They go pretty fast. Jackson came to the Miramar Air Show with his family. He says he knows exactly why kids his age would love to come to the air show. It's super cool, and you can, there's all this fun stuff you can do, and you get to see all these planes up close. Logan is a sixth grader who loves virtual reality games at home, but she says this flight simulator took VR to a whole other level. I was just flying around Las Vegas and like landing and just doing a couple barrel rolls. It's really cool. I've never seen this here before and I come almost every year. So what we have here is an F-35 flight simulator. Marlon Freeman is a lead engineer with Lockheed Martin. He says their flight simulator gives kids of all ages, myself included, the chance to actually be a pilot for the day. So this is a touch screen here. We have our heads up display here. We have a real stick and throttle. The throttle controls the speed and the stick navigates the aircraft. Freeman says there's a pilot shortage all across the country. The effects can be felt from airport delays and canceled commercial flights already. And when it comes to pilots needed to protect our country, this is just one way to grab kids of all ages attention no matter what they decide to do. And it's a really hands-on way for kids to uh, enjoy uh, flying, at least get a, a feel for what it's like to fly an aircraft. It's just a gamut of technical degrees that are required to support an aircraft like this. We want kids to get involved in STEM, so it's not just necessarily being a pilot, but engineering, math, science, all of those, uh, those fields. 
All right, so if you don't have a chance, yep. this was my first San Diego Miramar air show. Mm -hmm. Y'all, I've been to a couple different air shows all across the country. I'm not gonna name no states. This is the best one I have ever <laughs> seen. And don't forget, it is free. Yep. The fistful of free is for me. A fistful of free is a fistful <laughs> of me. I love it. So please take your family. Yeah. It's very kid friendly. They definitely have snacks. So yeah, get out there and get a good time. It definitely seems like something to do with the family for the weekend. Absolutely. Yes. But remember, <laughs> it's going to be hot, so make sure you yes. stay cool, get some water. CBS 8's coverage of the Miramar Air Show continues. Coming up at 638, we will go back up with Marcella Lee for her flight with the Blue Angels. All right, so the county has settled a lawsuit over the death of a man in custody for well over a million dollars. CBS 8's Steve Fiorina picks up the story we've covered several times since the death of a Mexican national in Fallbrook in 2018. It was a huge payout for the county. The lawsuit and settlement being handled with the involvement of the Mexican consulate. Marco Antonio Napolis was a Mexican national living in El Monte, whose car had broken down along I-15 near Fallbrook. He walked to a Circle K and asked to use a phone charger so he could call for help. Then he hung around for more than an hour. The manager asked him to leave, but he refused. Body cam video shows us the confrontation with law enforcement that followed before dawn on that summer morning four years ago. What's going on is this? I got a call that you're here. They want you to leave the store and you're not leaving. I need a remedy. Okay. So they can come get me. Okay. The deputy used his own cell phone to place a call for Napolis. He checked the man's ID, told him he had to leave the store's property, go over to a nearby park and ride. Go, over there, over there. Napolis walked away Locking and came back. Let's go. Walked away and came back. Not threatening, okay, but no, belligerent. And he had meth in yes, his system. You you're about two seconds away from going to jail. So go over there. Then a grappling match, a taser, yelling. Go. Please, I need help. Other deputies and a border patrol agent responding. <laughs> Napolis was tased, handcuffed, put into heavy duty restraints called RAP. Stop moving, hold still, stop resisting. He was pinned down and eventually placed on a stretcher and transported to a hospital, where 36 hours later, he died. It was one of several in custody deaths that have sparked protests in recent years. We are in crisis in San Diego. Now a $1.35 million settlement with San Diego County for Napolis family. No amount of money that is gonna change, and is gonna make, make up for the loss of a loved one, the loss of a son. The Consul General of Mexico spoke of the big picture. May this case remind us all that the excessive use of force is not acceptable under any circumstances. An investigation at the time indicated there was no excessive force used. Steve Fiorina, CBS 8. Tonight, the Attorney General is getting involved in the dispute between the city of El Cajon and San Diego County's hotel voucher program for the people experiencing homelessness. Yeah, following a spike in those using vouchers, El Cajon sent a letter to eight hotels saying they are in violation of their permit. So today, the AG issued a cease and desist, saying El Cajon cannot put any kind of restriction on the hotels. The mayor told us he's willing to go to court over this. Hear more from him tonight at 11. 